2024 Kia EV9 GT Line vs 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Max Limited 2024 Kia EV9 GT Line vs Toyota Grand Highlander Max Limited Battle of the People Moving Heavyweights Is heavy hybridization or full electrification better for moving lots of everything? Two industry titans come to a head in this comparison, the long-standing Toyota and recently reinvigorated Kia, with different approaches to their range-topping family haulers. The 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Max Limited is a burly hybrid, while the 2024 Kia EV9 GT line uses all-electric power. Head here for our standalone first test of the EV9. Toyota's SUV wears conservative styling while the Kia's design looks like it's made for a sci-fi video game. With these drastic differences in mind, this comparison represents a clash of car building philosophies as much as it is a two-way product evaluation. Read on to find out if the Grand Highlander or the EV9 represents the best approach to the trite and true three-row segment. Hybrid versus EV performance. The 2024 Grand Highlander Max makes use of the three-row SUV's range-topping powertrain. A 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine pairs with dual electric motors, one up front and one in the rear, to produce a total of 362 horsepower and 400 lbft of torque. Shifting is handled by a six-speed automatic transmission and all-wheel drive is standard. Acceleration is rapid, the 0 to 60 miles per hour takes just 5.9 seconds at the track. If the Grand Highlander faced off against a more conventional gasoline-only SUV, it would dust its rival with little competition. The hybrid drivetrain is strong and responsive, with plenty of low-end torque and pulling power at freeway speeds. The Grand Highlander's six-speed auto is a willing partner to the turbocharged engine, providing smooth and decisive gear changes. While testing the Grand Highlander on winding roads, the three-row SUV exhibits light steering with good on-center feel for a vehicle in this class. High-efficiency tires give up grip easily, but we aren't expecting most folks to be caning their three-row Toyota through curvy bends. Choppy road surfaces unsettle the SUV and result in noticeable gut jiggle over undulating pavement. Although the Grand Highlander's brakes provide immediate bite, they don't build as much confidence during longer stops as we'd like. Meanwhile, the 2024 Kia EV9 makes use of dual electric motors to produce a total of 379 horsepower and 516 lbft of torque. As a GT Line model, this EV9 has some performance left on the table for the forthcoming EV9 GT, but acceleration is still impressive. The 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint occurs in just 4.5 seconds, and the EV9 willingly pulls beyond that with seamless linearity. Although not a fully baked performance model, the EV9 handles well enough on a road course. Direct steering, upright body composure, and controlled braking make it surprisingly fun to loop on a twisty road. The low center of gravity encourages you to maintain speed through a curve and blast out of it with all 516 lbft of torque. Although the EV9's acceleration makes it feel sporty off the line, the big Kia can feel wallowy on a curvy road due to its mass and squishy suspension tuning. On the flip side, it tackles poor surfaces with the poise and isolation of a luxury vehicle. Like many other EVs, the EV9 allows for varying degrees of regenerative braking. Cranking it all the way up to the iPedal mode enables full one-pedal driving, which we found to be the most enjoyable way to operate the big Kia, controlling speed while cruising on the highway and bringing the three-row SUV smoothly to stop at an intersection are just as intuitive as using the brake pedal. Kia's large SUV isn't just fleet on the straightaways, it charges quickly as well. Its 800-volt architecture enables fast charging at rates up to 230 kilowatts, meaning that it can rapidly top off its 99.8 kilowatt-hour battery. Kia says the EV9 can recoup 10 to 80% charge in just 25 minutes. Total range for a dual-motor model like this one is acclaimed 243 miles, and we've noted the EV9 was frugal with its electricity usage over the course of our testing. Not only does Kia's three-row SUV have the performance to dust its rivals, it also has the charging capabilities to not be a hassle as well. Interior and Technology The Grand Highlander's interior is one of the best within the Toyota lineup thanks to an interesting blend of materials and lots of soft surfaces. Because this model uses the Max drivetrain, there's satin gold trim throughout the front row. The HVAC knobs are like a classier version of those that are in the Toyota RAV4, 
with a smooth, rubbery finish and digital temperature readouts in the center of the dials. There are three USB-C ports up front, including one that's explicitly for the passenger mounted on the dashboard next to the clever storage shelf. The ventilated seats are very supportive, well-bolstered, soft, and comfortable. Toyota's competent technology suite is composed of two large displays, including a 12.3-inch fully digital instrument cluster and a 12.3-inch infotainment touchscreen. Both units boast quick graphics with legible fonts. The 11-speaker audio setup from JBL, which should satisfy most drivers, but Kia equips the EV9 with a 14-speaker arrangement from Meridian that outshines the competition. Toyota's driver assist systems do a tidy job of keeping the car within its lane, even on tight or unconventional routes so long as the lane lanes are painted clearly. In parking lots, we appreciate that the 360-degree camera system is displayed with crisp graphics, making it easy to position the rather large Grand Highlander in tight spots. The readout also has a slick 3D graphic that renders a view of the vehicle from the outside of the car. In the second row, there's plenty of room for an adult to sit behind another adult in the driver's seat. Passengers will be comfortable, too, with tons of legroom and access to two cup holders situated in a removable caddy that anchors between the captain's chairs. On longer trips, second row passengers can charge their devices via two USB C ports in the back and an included AC 120V1500W outlet. Although Toyota equips an abundance of features for these seats, the actual chairs are flat and don't have much bolstering. Over in the EV9, material selection in the front row is excellent. The leather is super soft and it makes more use of soft materials than the Grand Highlander does. Metal-covered pedals are well-spaced and give the EV9 a sportier edge. A soft micro-suede roof further elevates the EV9's cabin to near-luxury elegance. The passenger seat can even be controlled from the driver's seat via toggles on the side of the chair, akin to what Genesis offers in the flagship G90. We'd be remiss to not call out the front row headrests, which have a soft mesh on them that's both supportive but feels sturdy and premium. Dual 12.3-inch displays are cleanly integrated into the dashboard and we particularly love the soft touch buttons that provide aggressive haptic feedback. Many manufacturers are experimenting with new control schemes in their cars, but Kia's execution represents the best reinterpretation of old-school hard buttons. Despite the tech-forward nature of the EV9's cabin, Kia also makes use of hard toggles for the temperature controls, fan speed adjustment, and climate control coverage mode. For everything else, Kia uses a small display for the items that require more fiddly calibration. In this way, the interior is both innovative, while remaining user-friendly. We also preferred Kia's packaging throughout the rest of the cabin. For example, there's a huge bucket up front for storage between the driver and passenger seats. In the well-furnished second row, there's a tray table that pulls out from the center console. Sliding away the tray reveals a massive cubby for even more storage. Unlike the Toyota, the second row seats aren't just heated, they're ventilated too. Outside of massage chair functionality, buyers are going to feel like they're getting their money's worth in the EV9. What about the third rows? The Grand Highlander's third row has gigantic cup holders and there are USB-C ports on either side. We noted the rear is roomy enough for an adult to sit in the third row behind another adult in the second row. The downside is the back row isn't furnished with any of the upscale materials present in the rest of the cabin, but there's still enough room for three adults to sit next to each other in a pinch. Accessing the third row in the Toyota Grand Highlander is another weak point. The seats collapse and move forward with a single pull of a lever, but the action of that handle is clunky and rough. Flipping down the third row from the trunk is similarly cumbersome, you really have to reach deep into the car to pull on straps and the mechanism that releases the seats isn't very smooth. Fortunately, there's a good trunk space behind the third row. Kia wins the battle for third row supremacy with a one-touch button that electronically collapses or resets the second row chair. Its captain seats even have electronic controls on the side and their motor adjusts the seats. They're a little slow but the mechanism is smooth and easy to operate. The Kia EV9's back seats are also better appointed than that of the Toyota. The brown trim from the rest of the cabin continues into the third row and the cup holders appear to be better suited to securing beverages when the road gets curvy. 
Dual USB-C ports are a plus as well. However, the EV9 only seats two people on the back bench in all available configurations. Like the third row, the Kia's trunk is about as big as the Grand Highlander's, except it offers buttons to collapse the motorized second row seats. You still have to physically release the third row and lower it, however, the action is smoother than it is in the Toyota. The EV9 also benefits from having a small frunk, which could be handy for stowing items that stay with the car like a picnic blanket. The Verdict Although Toyota and Kia have developed the Grand Highlander and EV9 with different powertrain philosophies, our time with both vehicles revealed a clear winner. The EV9 GT line is better equipped and drives with greater poise and polish than its rival. The one caveat is that Grand Highlander likely offers more competitive pricing, the one in this test stickers for $57,810, with the base model starting at $55,435. We expect that Kia will ask around $75,000 for this 2024 EV GT line as equipped. Single motor versions of the all-electric SUV should start around $55,000. Even with this notable differential in price, we think the Kia EV9 is worth the extra spend as a result of its more thoughtful packaging and benchmark setting execution. The mainstream three-row segment has a fully electrified competitor and rival manufacturers are going to have to put in the work to topple Kia's newly set gold standard.